Welcome back to DSTV Roundtable. I'm Donovan Goliath, and I am seated here with none other than Design For You's very own Pilani Boo Boo. Hey. special question for you here, Pilani. Mm -hmm. Would you take us through your top five home decor tips? Mm. It's very, I mean, they generally would be within a theme. So in this ah. case, I'll go with the big ones. Okay. I'd say that whatever you do, if you can, break down those walls. If there's a wall you can get rid of, get rid of it. I think transparency and, you know, kind of openness is the future mm -hmm. and flow is the future, open plan homes are the future, and it gives more breathing space, more light, including kind of opening up your windows. And two, focus on the large surfaces. If you want to start somewhere, if you want to inform a scheme or a color scheme, start with your floor. The floor will lift from something else and then the walls. And uh, three, focus on the focal point. So know where you're building, where you want people's eyes to go. So if it's the foyer and it's a big round table with lots of plants and lots of jars, focus on that. If it's your fireplace, let, make it pop, make it sort of 3D, bring the, the things forward. Feature walls, put on that wallpaper. It's not going to be peeling off the walls. It's not like 1980. It's going to stay, so don't be afraid to do it. And am I at number four, at number three, and number five, greenery? I mean, it doesn't have to live outside. It's mm. going to be a trend that stays. People don't understand that plants actually give you texture and it gives you color. So um, you can fill up like negative spaces. A negative space is where there's nothing there, like that corner is a negative space. So if you bring a, put a big planter, you know, it does something for the room and also it creates balance if you do twos or if you're trying to upweight something that's potentially a large mirror and you put something equally sort of as large, that is also good. And I'd say a neutral foundation is not boring. Um, people can play with color in many different ways. Scatter cushions. <laughs> and um, I see these days a lot, a lot of people just kind of using the flowers that they love or the flowers of the season mm -hmm. to inform the color scheme. That way you're never bored and you always feel fresh and, and it, it, it can last you for, for forever. So there's all kinds of neutrals. You know, black is actually a neutral. Tonal interiors are there. So if it's black on black on black with scales of gray, um, you, know, you know, from cool colors to warm colors, whether it's a gray that's warm or a gray that's cool. You it, really, it, the ideas are vast. So those are my top fives. Nobody was counting, but that I hope was, like the no, screen no, was no, going, no. You, might, you might have done Two, 13. Three. You might have done 13. In fact, I'm going to challenge you very, very quickly, sure. right? Give me the top three no-nos, things that must be left behind in 2020 when it comes to interior design. Right. Okay, one for me is buying rugs that are not to size. If your furniture can't all sit on the rug, whether it's your dining table or your lounge piece, at least to kind of meet the rug, then it's too small. Mm. If your coffee table is too oversized for the rug. Th two, um, I think we can move past kind of um, the three set. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't have to buy the whole piece you know, like mix and match. And I think it's a difficulty in old homes because it's, it's a budget issue. Yes. So quite often it's, it, you know, it's hard to, to let our parents kind of move past that, that phase. But I think as we kind of become upwardly mobile, we can swap out furniture. So all my old furniture, every time I move, I buy from scratch. I just, my mom like basically takes everything and she swaps out. So she takes that old bit to the farm or to like, you know, a, a household we have in the country, like say in the Eastern Cape. Mm. And so um, that kind of buying things in bulk in, or in threes or in sets of the same thing. And my third one is the aerodynamic leather sets uh, with tapered contemporary legs. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa. Chrome, chrome ones, the chrome legs. Ah, yeah, I die, the chrome. <laughs> the chrome legs. You remember those aerodynamic legs. seatings yes. and then we buy it in threes. Um, I think that the trends that we've taken from the Scandinavians and the Danish, like relatively minimalist, like squarey and modern will last us longer, low rise furniture. So for me, I think it's the bulk, the chunk and getting rid of aerodynamicness, just creating shapes that are like easier to look at and, and sit. Those are my three. Can I ask for advice? Yes. Hey. So, <laughs> hey, who am I sending this invoice to? <laughs> to me, Carla McKenzie. <laughs> so if you have one of my favorite um, couches is a Chesterfield couch, that one with the buttons mm, in. Mm. So how do you, what other chair do you place next to it? Because that's quite a bulky couch. Mm, mm. So what other chair do you put next to it and what kind of rug do you have? Mm. 
Mm. Well, there are no right or right, wrong answers, yeah. but if you look at the, where the Chesterfield chair comes from, which mm. usually um, you can put it into an industrial style set, set up, or you can put it in like a, a Victorian slash warm cigar lounge type space. Yes. I'm assuming that you young, you might want to be in the city and it's kind of like lofty. So yes. I'm going to assume you want an industrial style something. Yes. So because the leather is quite cold, you can go a, a bit warmer and take sort of something that's upcycled mid-century modern. You can go to Malville or you can go to any of the secondhand shops mm. and real pass something that's that's old, maybe some walnut wood um, and then to contrast that grey with a bit of, I mean the, the, the couch which we usually would be tan with yeah. grey. Oh, with So gray. an occasional chair with grey, those you can buy in two yeah. on either side. I'll send you pictures. Do you see that people buy sentimental stuff? So something that's gone from generation to generation. So we say, well, all this is actually quite cool. Do you see that? Yeah, absolutely. And we actually have one episode that's about old world mixed with modern. And the thing is, is that there are many styles that actually include old world. I think antiques are very important. They tell a story and sentimentality is ornamental. Like if you think of anything that's on a shelf or, or whatever, anything that's on a shelf is an ornament. So whatever is sentimental can very well be used to kind of decorate a bookshelf or a shelf or to tell a story in your cabinets. Usually those cabinets are old, the Chinese ones with the drinks. And because today we're all sort of drinking at home, <laughs> you know, quite a lot of those things are coming out of era that are, are, are old, Art Deco, or like something Moroccan, you know? So absolutely, I don't think that you should chuck those things away. I'm often trying to take from my grandmother's yeah, place and people. Same with me, yeah. yeah. What I would like you to do is to take a guess at what your fellow guests' homes look like. All right, I'm gonna give them like two or three things each because sure. I mean, I could go on of course, and on and yes. on. I'm going to start with our studded guy over there. Star, <laughs> star studded. It's Listen, exactly he it. looks like a leather loving, leather. chrome finish, some glass elements um, in his home, and probably a shaggy rug. You know, very contemporary, Bishop. Is this true, Bishop? Like, leather side, yes, is right. Ah. Yeah, and coming to the interior design at home, my wife does it. Hey, Mina mix, <laughs> Mina mix colors. Hey, I can put a yellow and a blue and everything else. <laughs> well, at least we got leather right. You got leather right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You seem, Samantha, like you like warmth and the African sunset, which was kind of, now I'm sorry to take you throwback, but South African homes still love the red and orange colors. Mm -hmm. So I think you probably have like some browns and some neutrals to turn that down, maybe red and yellow and like African-centered artwork with wooden frames. Okay, now she just went too deep. Say that again. With artwork <laughs> that's got wooden frames, probably lots of mahogany furniture as well. That's true. Mm. Okay. This is impressive, wow. by the way. <laughs> I'm a people reader. Wow, Jackie. <laughs> okay. Ooh. It depends on which part of the city he, he lives. Um, I'm assuming that uh, you're probably into the space where you're buying property and the city may be too noisy because your work is noisy. So I wouldn't say you have a loft in brown, but probably you have a home that's quite neutral, maybe a gray couch, white walls, and you're what? investing in artwork. <laughs> um, artwork, that's the, the, the colors in your artwork. Everything else is simple. Is that accurate? Jeez, bro, like, yeah. What? <laughs> really? Yeah, I've got like cream white walls and like a lot of artwork. I'm like, I, I collect art. <laughs> okay. That's fantastic. Jeez. You're welcome to do me as well. All right, I don't know if that's fair because I follow your stories and you shoot a lot of content. So there's white walls that you can use to create content. Mm. Um, you probably have parquet flooring because you probably live in kind of central Joburg mm -hmm. um, because it's kind of a hub for creatives. It's also peaceful. Mm -hmm. uh, parquet or some kind of wooden floor. Mm -hmm. um, you also probably have a very modern couch mm -hmm. if you're not doing neutrals um, and probably one scatter cushion on the couch because you just like want to keep it simple and keep it moving. <laughs> And um, I'm going to leave you at that. Almost there. No, no, no parquet flooring, but right on the white walls, obviously, mm -hmm. the, the minimalist uh, couch, uh, simple scatter cushion. Spot on. Very impressed. This is very impressive, by the way. <laughs> All right, should we move on? Yes. OK, so the Chesterfield couch is a dream, I'm assuming. Yes, I don't have it yet. Yeah, so yeah. you, OK, you probably stuck with a, a, a color scheme that was safe. Yes. Um, maybe something this color, like, but like toned down beige. Um, almost like a country styled, uh, you know, where everything is kind of like light and the cabinets are, I don't know, you seem like you live in those Tuscan estates and, you know, it kind of informs everything else, which feels quite country, which is lots and lots of neutrals. 
I do live in a Tuscan oh. estate <laughs> and I do have neutrals at the moment and yeah, that's why I asked about the Chesterfield because I want to change it up a bit, but that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Borderline and scary Donovan, in, in my church would always be saying to her, go deeper, mama. It's like she's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's prophesying. <laughs> oh, okay, should we move on? Yes. Well, now that I know that Devon owns the Whippet, which has like these New York style brass finished lights with open glass, uh, exposed glass, I'm assuming you have a uh, um, kind of modern industrial home where you've got like these big window panels that are painted in black with black accents and black frames. Um, you've probably got gray walls with different shades of gray um, and uh, lots of glass to play with, mirrors to make space. Um, and you probably have a day bed that separates the living room mm. and you play a lot with kind of side tables that are finished in black accents as well. I'll stop there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also almost spot on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bed, right? I'm I, don't know, okay. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's another talent you don't know. I'm very the prophetic. There's a lady that I, I, I brought to my house and she was like, okay, I wanted her to, to work on my bedroom. And she was like, okay, this is where um, you want to rest, this is what you need to have, you need to have this type of lamp, you need to like this color because when you get in there you want to relax, you know, so I think mm. it, it has that connection. So, it's um, so deep, hey? yeah, there it's, has to be an intuitive, uh, so, so um, assuming how someone will live, you got to live the journey of their house, right? And you also got to put yourself in their, in their position and then you just, the only thing you're changing around is what suits them, the preference would either be color or the preference would be shapes, you mm. know what I mean? And, then, and that changes. And then I think that um, you have to be uh, observant of the environment. I think I just, I don't know, I, I probably did demographically, you know, kind of assume what your homes look like. Um, um, maybe I'm observant. <laughs> maybe I'm judgy, I don't uh, know. <laughs> I don't know if it has anything to do with observation. Um, do not be surprised at some point if you find Pilani's name um, on the front page of the Daily Sun. Yeah. <laughs> which craft and sourcing <laughs> may, may or may not be involved, who even knows. Uh, but this is DSTV Roundtable. My name is Donovan Goliath. Please make sure you check out Pilani Boo Boo's show and see if there's anything on there um, that you know she speaks about. Where you go, how did she? Did she is speaking directly to me. How does it even happen? Please do check it out.